Jacob made fun of us because as we were covering the uh, Weinberg match last round, we, at a certain point, just kind of started talking about the field, about the metagame, about what's winning today, because that was something we wanted to share with you. And he claimed it was because counterbalance is simply so boring. So um, hopefully we won't have Michael Jacob falling asleep when he plays against it. Yeah, and it wasn't so much that the deck itself is boring. His opponent was just drawing blanks over and over and yeah, over I again. Yeah, I think so. So well, in the event that it wasn't a very exciting game at the time. Ben. Yeah, and actually I think that um, the way that this deck is built, the one that Michael Jacob is playing, <laughs> Counterbalance was actually right one of oh. the back, oh. one of the big decks that Brian Cole was gunning for. Heaven out. I have it so out. that was actually a part of his goal. Yes. And Locked. what you'll see in the side or in the main deck of this list, four Vindicate, one Pernicious Deed, and one Maelstrom Pulse, all of which are at that magic free spot that can break up the combo of Counterbalance and the Sensei's Divining Touch. People know who I am. You also that the Relic Warrior in the same casting cost. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Great threat to You don't know me? I don't need to know you. He has four handles. Are you really repairing? Give some card advantage. And we have Michael Jacob has written his Moto Nick Darkest Mage on his feature match sheet that we have displayed for the people that are spectating live to see. Yes. Rashad says he has seen darker mages. I think well, he may actually be the alone. least dark mage. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mage. Palest mage, says Rashad. The thing is that we're not Dirtle. So you don't have to worry too much about Dirtle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Dirtle is? Yeah. So one of the questions I kind of have when I, I think like, about you know how the word hello means this yeah. match you look up the is like, <laughs> it has no definition. the changes to the board that um, I see with Michael Jacob. There's a lot of scribble marks here. Um, He's got the, an access to three Pernicious Deed after board, which is really good against Counterbalance. And he's got access to four Thoughtseize, four Hymn to Turok, and after board Duress. And I actually think that the Gerard's verdict he was making fun of is good. But one thing I don't see in his sideboard that was definitely um, present when Brad Nelson was playing this deck to a, uh, to a, a very near victory, a second place finish in Columbus, is he only has one Croson Grip. Which, and that can know, be a big deal when you're trying to break up counterbalance. In the same way, though, when I uh, when I spoke to Brad about the uh, the deck, he said that he very rarely broke up the combo at all. That he just kept winning through it, and he felt like he was the luckiest person in the world. He was just breaking through it, and he said the deck was awesome. You do? He described it. See, I, I didn't amazing see you roll. We, we have it on camera. Amazeth, Bullshit. Where he oh. the off guard. People didn't realize the interaction of Amazeth. <laughs> And now the relic was as strong as it actually yeah. was. <laughs> I mean, I really like the ability of pausing on the Knight of the Reliquary for one turn to make it suddenly be, you know, able to grow by one or by two, I should say, every turn. You know, you if you just pause one turn to get that maze of it, that means the next turn you can attack, put damage, let it resolve before combat ends, untap the knight, and then get a sack land, sack it, and have plus two for the next turn. It was there. Dude, I think it's it too late. Uh, yeah, the guys big, are over here. Fast. We can't go back. I think it Especially was when you're. Uh, I rolled a five. You rolled a total of five. And there was one dice here with a five and one with a three. Oh, yeah. 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 Then that means you get eight. Eight is great. Excuse me. I didn't see it happen. My hand might have brushed it. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely saw him roll the eight. I swear. Oh, yeah. Hey, how's it going? All right. Yeah. All right. How's it going? Oh, I got rolled an eight, by the way. You didn't see me too bad. Your loss. R E D D I T. Reddit. So, <laughs> best sign on the Ben Weinberg. No, so yeah, they, happy to be playing his deck there. <laughs> I'm not, it's just a, uh, Legacy players, an interesting so. happy. Man, it's now, a, I'm like, top counterbalance, four lands, can I keep uh, this? You know, oh, I guess oh, um, the, the I'm willing to bet that with even the little changes, that unless uh, Michael Jacob so hates the deck and so hates the format that he's unwilling to try to find paths to victory, I bet you that he's going to be favored in this matchup by at least a, a small margin. Oh, yeah. I mean, Whoa, wait a this second. deck looks great for this matchup. Here comes a ponder. Wait, can they even see our hands? Do I need to do something so they can see our hands? You kept it on top? Yeah. Go ahead. If you just like lay it down flat, they'll see it. Really? Yeah, it's all okay. So? <laughs> Alright, see, so that's my hand. Right. 
Oh, right, it's a monkey. Okay, and we get the uh, beginning of an opening. Mox Diamond. Not having a land down there to begin with. Uh, oh, Mike. Or did type play? It's probably gonna three. confidant. Yep. This is powering into a charm grip doesn't seem like the greatest thing ever. There it is, though. Yeah. Starts out as a two-three. It'll get bigger than that, though. It's a three-four the next time one tries to hit the table. It's true. I mean, Mike now, though, has access to, uh, at the top. Go ahead. It's, he basically stole the play. Yeah. That's essentially what happened. There's a Sensei's Divining Top. Ben loses one, goes to And right here is the turn that often, going that two drop, three drop is one of the things that makes junk good. Being able to do that a turn earlier. Thoughtseize, perhaps? There it is. And then I, I feel like, Oof, I feel look like at there that. has to be a confidant. Double force of will and brainstorm. You take the storm. You take the brainstorm here. I think you do. I think you do also. Those force of wills are going to be another opportunity to for Michael Jacob to two for one his opponent. Yeah. Just and he's got, en cards. he's got enough redundancy with a lot of these cards here. It's okay if uh, there are two force of wills. We're not going to get to the point. Uh, where he cares that one singular card is going to go away. And then there it goes. There goes Brainstorm. And now let's say he drops a powerful true two drop. He's happy to see it get Force of Will to win. I mean, yeah. if it's clearing out his opponent's hand, that's fine. He's probably... I don't know. Maybe he, uh, maybe he just baited the Force with the Goyf and he actually has the Confidant in hand. I'm just uh, thinking about how no, Mike plays. Yeah, I not. feel like he. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> Look at that Vindicate hanging out. That's exciting. Him to Torok, maybe? Vindicate is just so good. Oh, Dark Confidant. That'll draw the Force of Will. Oh, check to see if I got a blue spell. <laughs> I think I see one. Just couldn't make my job. <laughs> Am I wrong? Is that a blue spell uh, in the very think it's, uh... I think it's actually a savanna, a trop, and a div top. Oh, okay. Force the force. Go ahead. Now, if you look at that, with two force of wills gone, that's pretty rough. Three forces gone now. No, well, um, two being cast, I should say. Yeah. That means that he's gone up on uh, on cards twice. Now, he sure. went down on cards once for that mox. But I don't think he's sad for that acceleration. That's going to be a permanent resource in play, whereas Ben doesn't have any permanent resources to come back from with that. He has the opportunity here to... Oh, there we go, his own top. Top's just so good. I just always want to play top. Yeah. Looking to see for... Uh, Perhaps a wasteland. And we got the tops rolling on both sides. And a top again. It looks like the wolf. The him. wolf fallen empire him. The like moon wolf him. That, that's my favorite him. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Actually, I think oh. I like the ring around the rosies. Uh, it him reminds a me too much bit. of Doomsday. I was confused. The wolf one's awesome. I would get that on a T-shirt. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like a local flea market. I recently bought a T-shirt that has like. 
uh, translucent, <laughs> like, uh, Native Americans. Oh, and, like, a herd of buffalo running. And then lightning in the background. Horses running in the sky. <laughs> there's a wolf howling. It's my armpit. You know. Think uh, Those are the types of shirts that, uh, you know. If you're, you're, uh, if you're interested in uh, <laughs> finding a uh, soulmate, Very well done. I strongly recommend finding a shirt with as many different ghosts and wild animals on it as you possibly can, because th that that attracts people. It was Oscar Lab, actually, I think. <laughs> Encroach. We'll oh, that's it. Yeah. Go ahead. That's what I'm thinking of. Somebody said that shirt sounds like a pregnant somebody. So one card I'm surprised that we didn't see as much of today is uh, Vampire Hexmage, along with Dark Depths. Somebody mentioned that here. I really like that addition to the land deck. I believe that was an innovation made by Chris Woltrick. Hmm. And uh, it's, it seemed very impressive to me since the first time I saw it. You keep your left rolling your left. Yeah, that's my left. Okay, no, that's fine. I have uh, 17. Now, Chris, oh, for a lot of people, I think I really made his first splash in the Star City game like series as well. Yeah, I, I um, he did very well, I think, two years <laughs> so ago before we had the larger open series at large. And just, <laughs> I think, put in some successes with five color control, amongst other things. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Chris is such a good player. But Chris, you know, he's not the type of guy who's doing like a lot of work on the game. He works. He's. Uh, you know, he's starcrafting all the time, getting better at that. But he's just such a talented player. Boy. Ben is at 18, Darkest Moon is at 16. Go! Oh. Things are looking grim for our hero. <coughs> Neither of us seem to be having the most exciting draw, though. <laughs> Top. Through here, I'm looking out into the field and I can see uh, familiar faces like Jerry Thompson just battling it out. People like Brian, the I Ross know. boss. Yeah. Through here. Playing a few more matches. Mr. Dirtle himself. Go. So, right now, MJ uh, finally has a threat in play. He's been waiting to find something that was some kind of action for a little while now. I think. I'm going to top her stuff. It's fairly likely that in all of this time, Ben Wenberg has some kind of answer to it, though. And there it is. 21. Go ahead. Darkest Mage goes 5. And there's a sack land in there as well as a horizon canopy. It's kind of an interesting game. I mean, when games go this long, it almost always favors the blue deck, but Mike has, you know, Mike's hurt Ben to such a degree. Ben, ben is really just working off the top of his deck with a top. And Mike, Mike's at least gotten to shuffle and see some extra cards, you know? All right, here comes Goyf. Yet another threat coming down. Top, Top looking for some kind of response. It's pretty rough for Ben here. And like using those two forces so early, just yeah, you know, it's basically like this one. five. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And the Tarmogoyf resolves. Another look to see if there's some answer to it. That's what I expected. I wish. I don't. I don't uh, have these good cards. You think I do? And he has a counterbalance. And counterbalance top. I mean, it's very possible a that a three drop so. might be on top, <laughs> just as a uh, precaution that Weinberg would have set up know, against the problem so, that a uh, Vindicate or a Maelstrom Pulse yeah. would re would represent. Michael Jacob checks to see if the 3-drop uh, is there. Yeah. 
He says, huh, do you have a three shot? And <laughs> Ben's like, no. No, I really don't. I don't want that. 13? That's five, three or 13. That's one of the reasons why uh, this deck is so good in this matchup. You have so many cards that just like dodge the counterbalance. Yeah, and it, like they can have a whole bunch of things assembled, and then you can even lay a deed. <laughs> yeah. You know? Face bounce now. Everybody who's ever played the second counterbalance in order to uh, protect themselves against Crossing Grip would be very upset to uh, do that in this matchup. Deed. You're fighting against things like Maelstrom Ball. Oh man. Deed. Yeah, I really like this deck. I mean, I think that this as an update to uh, my junk list from a million years ago is very, very strong. And um, he was really inspired to do this after playing Cedric Phillips' Black Green deck at. Uh, the Grand Prix, and I want to say it's Grand Prix Chicago, but I'm, f I'm forgetting which one Grand Prix um, that Brian Cole was in the top eight and then ended up getting disqualified because of dark confidant triggers. Um, that was Grand Prix Chicago? Yeah, that was Chicago, yeah. That was very upsetting for me. Yeah, it was a sad moment for a lot of us. Yeah. <clears throat> you guys like Force World 2 blue cards? Oh, no, this isn't going to work out, is it? <laughs> See, Mike says left. that he hates this game so much, but whenever you're watching him playing, he's always got a big smile on his face, and he's always laughing. He has, like, this defeatist sense of humor, so he clearly enjoys it. I like it. It's one deeper, right? I mean, next turn. Well, I can see one more deeper this turn. I mean, sure, if you pay one, yeah. Nothing of a note on top of his library. It's gonna resolve. No, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so Mike's gonna get the bash a little bit. Seven. He's at seven. Stop lying. here. Uh, Jace brainstorm swords, I guess. No. I mean, if I want, to want to take you to one. What if I want to take you to one? Uh, we'll go on top. Er, we're gonna use the island. I don't really want the I agree. And Ben is trying to dig for something. He just needs an answer okay, quick. Yeah. How big is the knight? Uh. One, two, three. So he's a five. He's a five. I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a six. Uh, I mean, Ben, I believe, has already used two swords to plowshares. Uh, I haven't played it like This leaves his answers right now Shackle, oh, you just played um, oh, yeah, which yeah, yeah, is yeah. definitely large enough to take a Tarmogoy. Yeah, Probably yeah. not large enough to take that Knight of the Reliquary right now. Um, yeah, the it's just too big. Too big, yeah. Engineered explosives. The final swords to plowshares are basically what he needs. A Jace can keep something off the table for a moment, and that might be powerful enough, but... Top activation on the stack. Draw guard. Alright, here he goes, flipping the top. And he's got to go up the yep. zone. Unfortunately, I believe Mike has a. I think he's got a sword, sword hanging out. Hand, yeah. I mean, that sword is going to. Uh, going to make Ben survive another swing, though. That's pretty irrelevant, you know. Yeah, no, I mean. This horizon canopy. Right. <laughs> ben doesn't want to bother the rest of the turn playing out. Fair enough. Did, okay, so what is case. Ben going to bring in? <laughs> Wasn't going to be good enough, though. Let's take a look. I'm sure Ben brings in an extra path. Right, he brings in a path. Certainly wins something. 
relic of progenitus is actually not terrible. Yeah, a relic of progenitus can turn. Uh, I mean, he's, he can cycle it, right? He can cycle it to turn Tarmogoyf and Knight of the Reliquary into small guys. It's true. If oh it didn't, really? If it didn't is that cycle, how it's going to be? I don't think it would be. Yeah, if it didn't cycle, well, I don't I've think it would be. I've never run that one before. People right. call me. You have to win with your own targets, too. Right? <laughs> this is true. But I mean, sometimes it's in funny. this deck, I think that a lot of the times, <laughs> yeah, I'm you're not going to be. two power guys good enough, right? Yeah, you're well, not I've going to also that. be the one that's usually starting the the aggressive element of the game. You're going to be more on your heels a little bit. And if you do happen to be on the aggressive side, well, you don't have to shrink anything. You can just. Let close. that sit so out like, there. So we'll keep it in your hand and brainstorm it away. You draw? <laughs> Are you for real? Hey, your opponent still wanted to draw on the ninth after... <laughs> like, he was just drawing dead no matter what, you know? Remember that, that PDU top 8 you just won? It was just like, I want to draw. Why'd you knock me out? You were ninth no matter what, dude. Oh, that guy, he was so angry. He was so angry. And he beat these. No, you beat him. No, the, oh, the Affinity guy? Yeah. No, yeah, I think he probably I mean, came for you. I might be wrong. He could bring no, no, in Meddling Mage okay. as a means to fight won, in Vindicate. All right. Yeah, so, I, I mean, like, he brought in Meddling Mage against the other that, that right? was similar to this. Right. And he named Knight of the Rock. Right. So that deck was blue instead of black. Now, of course, even if his opponent, Michael Jacob, can pass to Exile, so or pardon me, can uh, <laughs> Swords to Plowshares a Meddling Mage, it's just one less swords that's going to be taking out a Tarmogoyf well, on the other side. The super pro win. You board everything in, and you just like, you know, shuffle around, and then... Now, traditionally, a mid-range aggro deck like this would be fairly poorly positioned against a control deck that's as, you know, essentially very, very deep in the control element of archetypes. But one of the things that really shift things around here is that because the control deck in this case is pushing so much of its <laughs> emphasis onto the counterbalance engine, the pernicious deed and vindicate and the uh, maelstrom pulse, you know they done. all end the up being very valuable in making sure that you don't simply have something yeah, overwhelming happen to control you out. They are being controlled on the table and a mid-range deck like this is prepared to fight on the table. Yeah, and it makes sense. I mean, my team definitely won a PC with, you know, 61 cards. I cut down to 60, but yeah. they were like, no, I'm like, fine. Why do you have to have two science fires in our draft? That's why I didn't copy that one. And also me and I think Adam Spears had a game where neither of us did anything to like turn three or four. On that one, bro, just like we both like triple fight. Yeah. Lost, this is round six, lost, I believe. Like, the last PT is like the real TT, like top eight man. Is it round seven? Yeah. yeah. Because, uh, really? We both like did seven. nothing the uh, first two turns. But like I was playing a deck that everything cost one two. Three, Jacob three, was five zero after we interviewed so, him. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob was 5 0 after we interviewed. We were talking about well earlier how like and every matchup is 90 10. Then we yes, did the last Ben like, match, like, and now we're I, doing like, the first Michael Jacob match. match. Whatever, like, was, like, made the top eight with, like, also the best, like, Ben Weinberg. Like, yeah. like, yeah. everything in the top eight. And like, beat the person, the guy in the pound was like, you know, so, what? He's, like, using all of their yeah, sleeves, no I'm sure no it would be very possible to but make a sculpture of Donatello, the Ninja Turtle. It was like best of five or something. I think they had everything necessary there. Like, you'll take your 70 30s there all day long. Just thought I could point that out. And if you lose, you suck. He had. They also have. Uh, I feel like they have uh, mirror Rebros match as far as arm hair goes. That doesn't seem uh, fair. Yeah. Because the, the decks in the top eight were all solo decks, and he had two mana instant. Both these Tap players know each other pretty draw well. Draw card doesn't untap joking. next turn. So it's like better than time walk, and he had four regrowth. Can you just tap lands too? It's actually uh, as obnoxious as it might seem. Playing so. against Michael Jacob is very or, fun. Or whatever. <laughs> I've always <laughs> enjoyed uh, him being around and. Uh, Play games with him and against him. A lot of people uh, kind of seem to uh, take it to heart too much when he uh, begins complaining to the degree that he likes to. I mean, a but, lot of a lot of that is performance. I feel. Oh like. yeah. I mean, he clearly loves the game. He's he goes everywhere. He plays everywhere. I mean, you don't do that unless you absolutely love the game and you're doing it because he it's something you love. Brainstorm. Okay. Yeah. No. No force of will here. Sorry. We've got a thought seize that is uh, probably going to hit a brainstorm protected hand. 
misdirection, that doesn't even work. Yeah. Brainstorm is a really good card against cards like Thoughtseize because there's a key card that you really need. You can just brainstorm a response and you just hide the card that you think your opponent might and your like, need to steal. Yeah. And there, it's a beautiful display of that. Uh, ben Weinberg right? yeah. gets thought seized, decides, I'm going to put this counterbalance on the top of my library. I don't want Mike to be able to take okay. this. Yeah. So, gets the counterbalance into play, knows it's there, flips it over, puts it face down, turns the one land sideways, and it's going to take his turn again. It's a good shortcut, too. Just maintain a positive game face. In response to one of the questions about what mid-range aggro is, I made sure to try to put a link that goes into the specific distinctions of some of the strategic archetypes. Fortunate might be the term I would have used. So feel free to check out that link that's on StarCityGames.com and uh, in our chat. A lot of people um, don't necessarily know that the, w the ways that the specific strategic archetypes actually influence matches. You know, for example, if Michael Jacob didn't have a particular set of good cards to deal with permanence on the board, and if Ben Weinberg's control elements weren't on the board, this would probably turn into a really rough matchup. But just the natures of the way these two decks work, based on elements of the fundamental natures of their decks, make this in general a matchup that I know Brian Cole, when he was building this deck, viewed Counterbalance as generally one of his uh, his his favorite matchups. Michael Jacob tries to uh, resolve a confidant there. If a confidant stays in play for a turn or two, it's basically lights out for Ben. In the matchup <coughs> like this, each card is so important. Yeah. Right now, as it stands, Michael Jacob is in pretty rough shape. Yeah, the uh, yep. counter have been this. assembled. <laughs> Luckily for I, Michael, I maybe you um, your tax it does not seem too reasonable for Ben to, let's say, uh, have a removal spell in his hand at the ready. And he has to find one with the top. So he's going to go searching. And I, let's see what he can find. Ben can find uh, swords to plowshares. He can probably find a path to exile, and he may be able to find Vidalka Shackles. A ponder, All these are sorry, incredible did, cards. Sorry, to interrupt. A ponder quickly shuffles away. No findings of those those solutions to the Tarmogwave problem. As you said, he does have many solutions. Yeah, he's he's got a ton of solutions here. There's so much going on. Even a Jace is a beautiful solution here. Leaving a two on top after your draw step and tapping out for a Jace is incredibly strong. Your uh, opponent will perhaps try to go for a coffin icon or something like that, and you can just flip your card, show them the two, and you get a free card. And here it comes and again. And a free turn of your opponent's. <laughs> He has land. Two mana once again. Him to Torak. There's a spell snare in Ben's hand. He's got counterbalance top going. So between those two, this him to Torak is not likely to resolve. Wow. Or he doesn't care. Not gonna reveal from the counterbalance? Huh. It's pretty shocking to me. Yeah, I mean, he, he, countering him is pretty important. Is, I mean, does, he... Does he not... I don't think he knows the top of his library, because it was shuffled from a ponder. And I don't think that he... Uh, maybe he topped it directly after. Did he know it was on top, and he just didn't want to show it? Um, he didn't know it was on top. Uh, yeah, I guess he did, actually. So he, he uh, there it is, the card that he knew was on top, which could have countered that him to Turok. I remember 
heard you say it's extra table top, so I can't imagine you, uh, <laughs> extra. <laughs> So, things have kind of changed pretty quickly here. Well, I mean, one thing to notice is that Pete, or, he does happen to have a pernicious deed in his hand. If I he's mean, got a land, a pretty powerful spell. if he's got a land, he can use that to pop off the combo once again. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's just a two for two. He doesn't really gain any card advantage off this. I spell. mean, but getting that getting that top off the table. That in and of itself is really good. <laughs> Deed is one of the few cards you even get to resolve <laughs> in a spot like this. The, uh, the threes are just so good. They can find their way through a counterbalance. So, Ooh, Elspeth. Mike plays an Elspeth, oh, and wow. Ben's deck only has <laughs> two fours in it, so oh, sure. Ben needs to get pretty lucky here with a counterbalance. <laughs> Elspeth is just a beast right, right now, too. Oh this card is, <laughs> this card is Ben's face certainly He's like, well, just that's a complete spicy. and total trump at this point. And thinks to himself, all right, maybe I can activate my top. And let me look at my graveyard real quick. I'm going to... Pick up my div top. I'm gonna put back down my div top. You know, just Ben Weinberg thoughts going through a Ben Weinberg head. You know, Ben is uh, he, he's willing to take some time to think, think things through. I mean, that's a good thing. I joke, but in all seriousness, taking your time and making good plays. Just playing tight and thinking about each match individually is super important to doing well at tournaments. Something I've been trying to do more lately is to think of every single match as an individual game of magic and not try to think about the implications of that match. Even when I'm playing for the top eight of an event, I try to treat it the same way as if I'm playing a normal game just with my friends at my apartment. But I try to make the best play I can every single time and think about the game as a game of magic and not anything else. It helps. Try it. Yeah. So, um, the top of Ben's library has Cross and Grip and Force of Will. I don't really like those ones too much. They, they weren't good enough. I mean, the thing I would do here, make the token, and then the next turn start going to the air. Oh, yeah. How nice are you? To the air. Oh, no. I was actually just going to ask joke about that. I mean, there. Is the Tarmogoy five or six? Is Ben just dead? It's, it's big, big. Oh, I did everything um, I do not believe that the Tarmogoy is a six. I don't think that there are. Uh, Tribal cards. We have. Uh, no, al there are no planeswalkers in the yard. There are no tribal cards. Uh, in the yard. No planeswalkers. Okay, so I guess it was, I guess it was a suit. We're looking at a. Uh, well, I guess we have sorcery, instant creature, land, enchantment. Do we have an artifact? I don't believe there's an artifact in any yard. Okay, so we're at a five six. So. Michael Jacob is okay. one off here. So. It goes on the stack no matter what, even before he even gets priority. The next time he would get priority, the active player puts the triggers, the non active player puts the triggers, so it goes on the stack, then he gets priority to do something. I mean, maybe he does want to just jump in the air to knock out the ability for uh, Ben to use a sack land again. Oh, it was neat. That's fair. <laughs> this one I assumed it wasn't soon. This one. Because then at the, that level, right, he can't really, uh, Ben can't afford to snap back to kill the Elspeth. Because then the snapback from uh, Jacob will kill him. Yeah. I'm interested to see how uh, 
How does that Elspeth only have four counters? I think he's still trying to decide what to do with it. Oh, okay. The one allows you to kill my Elspeth, which means I'm dead almost anything. So, make a token. Okay. There's the top again. Activate the top. Says Michael Jacob so powerful. playing uh, the uh, Brian Kowal revision of Pro Tour Junk that I believe was unveiled um, for the I'm most part well. at... Grand Prix Columbus this last year? Yes. And that took Brad Nelson to a second place finish. It's uh, multiple second places for Brad this last year. There's a path to exile. Oh, um, I don't think Brad came in second. Brad came in second in Toronto. I think Brad lost in the first round of oh, top did eight. Brad, did Brad lose yeah, in the first round? Yeah, he, uh, he got Saito. Okay. Okay. I, I, Not a bad way. I, I thought he did a little bit better than that, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just mediocre. He should have done better. Um, and with regards to uh, people taking credit him. for building this deck, uh, I will absolutely take credit for building Pro Tour Junk as I was given an incredible amount of hell for making the deck by John Finkel and Chris Bakula, amongst others, around 1999. And... Uh, the deck was essentially designed for the Pro Tour Chicago that Bob Maher would win with Counter Oath, the Counter Oath deck that was designed by Ped Bunn. And it's been a deck that I think has performed very well over the years, but has generally been called bad at different points, even though it usually ends up putting up really solid results. It's interesting because... That type of strategy generally plays weaker cards than the more mainstream decks in any given format. But the synergy of aggressive creatures, good removal spells, in, in fact the best removal spells, and the best disruption is just like a really potent combination. It's Absolutely. like finding this like really nice mix. And you know, um, this deck is very similar to, in some ways, to Sol Malka's The Rock. But the big difference between a junk deck and a rock deck, a junk deck is a mid-range aggro deck. It's trying to put on a clock and kill you with it. And a rock deck is happier to stretch a game out. And it's yeah, going to do much deck. more controlling aspects of a mid-range control deck. Oh, deed. So, one of the things about Elspeth here is I think uh, it protects itself in addition to, you know, just doing absurd things and allowing you to be more aggressive. So, even if Ben were to play a creature that doesn't have evasion, Mike would still have such a huge advantage because the Elspeth could protect itself while it, like, suits up Absolutely. the uh, remaining token to bash in the air. Its counters also get so high up so quickly that even if you do manage to hit it, you're not going to kill it, and it's still going to swing back at you and really put you in danger of being lethal. And here we have a uh, Trinket Mage. It's probably going to just to reassemble the top, but that might not be good enough here. He might actually need to consider something like an engineered explosives. And his yeah, life I mean, total actually is... A, is that a correct life total? Is he at 15? Uh, yes, he is. He gained six life off the path to exile. Okay. Or, uh, or off, off the swords, swords to plowshares. Sorry. Okay. And... Uh, okay, in that case... Yeah, I think Mike here has uh, a deed. So... That's pretty good. I mean, Mike can just play now, if, he, if he rips he, the land. He, he, he used, tried to do the deed before, but there was a Croson grip on top of the library and a counterbalance, then revealed it and countered it. Oh, so he no longer has the deed. Now. Right, he, is no, he no longer has that card. Okay. So he's got 
Karakas Tarmogoyf. Okay, a blind counterbalance flip fails to stop Tarmogoyf. <laughs> Elspeth at seven. One card. That's a dangerous thing. <laughs> yes, it's it's getting up there. It's actually not the type of thing you want to be doing against, uh, like, for example, Ben's deck. Ben's deck isn't trying to destroy any of your permanents. Indestructibility is almost irrelevant. His creature removal is Path, Textile, and Swords, both of which ignore Elspeth's ultimate. And his actual board control all comes in the form of permanence. So here we have an engineered explosives about to be uh, for four. It looks like red, green, white, blue. <laughs> and that is a large soldier token that's been put into play. It's the biggest soldier token I've ever seen. I've seen bigger. But uh, somehow, this soldier token made Michael Jacob lose his game win. <laughs> And here comes a uh, big Tarmogoyf. Uh, so this is seven now? Uh, I believe so. I think it's the max it's going to get, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, yeah that's big. Uh, Artifact, Planeswalker, Enchantment. Everything essentially but the tribal. Yeah. This thing is big. So it's... It's got everything now. Except tribal. So Except for uh, tribal. Six, seven? Seven, eight. There's a planeswalker in the yard. Forgot about that. When it was first printed and there was one thing missing. <laughs> and now the follow up here leads with Knight of the Reliquary. The blind flip shows no hit. But a sword will be just as good as a hit here. Brainstorm. Draft open number two, top eight players. Please report to the row of tables immediately in front of the scorekeeper station. Brainstorm finds Jace. Where Ricky is pointing. Once again, draft open number two players, oh, please report to the row of tables immediately in front okay. of the scorekeeper station that Ricky is now shaking at. Things look pretty bad for Ben here. Yeah, I mean, things look pretty bad. I, I, think that Michael, I think that Michael Jacob has a Tarmogoyf in his hand as well. Ooh. Jace is pretty good. Bounce the Tarmogoyf. Swords the knight. Suddenly, uh, things look like it's turned around. You know, if he does have an extra Tarmogoyf in hand, I still would have unloaded both of. Oh no, it was just a uh, just a Caracas. Just. Yeah, things are now suddenly looking on the other foot. There's the reassembly of the uh, countertop. How good would another deed be? <laughs> there are 10 minutes left in this round. A little bit of change. And I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Star City Games Live, bringing you live coverage of the Kansas City Legacy Open Series. And I'm Jacob Van Lunen. And right now we're watching round 8 or not of round the Legacy. Seven, round 7. Oh. Right now we're watching round 7 of the Legacy Open. We're watching Ben Weinberg playing with Counterbalance against Michael Jacob playing Pro Tour Junk Update by Brian Kowal. Knight of the Reliquary has really proven itself as like one of the greater cards to come out in the recent history of the game. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's interesting because when the card was first revealed, it was considered good, you know, it saw a small amount of play for the first few months, 
but as more time has passed, it's taken on life where it's found its way into like tier one decks in virtually every format. Now, we're uh, approaching the nine minute mark, and it could actually be problematic for, uh, for Ben to get a win in, in time. With 10 minutes remaining on the clock at this stage of the game, I don't think there's an issue with Ben winning this game particularly, but I think winning a third game is almost impossible for him at this point. Yeah. So, right now, Ben is playing for a draw, in my mind. I mean, crazy things happen, though. He, okay. he does have Tarmogoyfs in his deck, so... And he did just level the uh, Jace. Not level, pardon me. Um, add two to the loyalty of Jace. He's got a Swords for the Tarmogoyf. 25, right? That's eight more life than, or sorry, seven more life for Michael Jacob. And Michael Jacob shuffles away the Mox Diamond that was left on top of his library by Jace the Mind Sculptor. Even at this point, a. Uh, Pernicious Deed would actually be in some ways pretty frustrating because it would leave Jace and it would leave Sensei's Divining Top around to wreak havoc. But it would also mean on another um, score that the clock that has been built up by Ben would be greatly diminished. Yeah. And the idea of the clock right now actually is important. Okay, MJ scoops it up to try to get to a game three. He's going to back it in. Yeah. That's a good idea. I mean, he only has 7 minutes and 46 seconds left, so he better shuffle up quick. He wants to make it to a finished game 3. A draw here is pretty rough for them. They both would have to uh, get there in the very last round and then pray that their tiebreakers make it. Oh. <laughs> we have just seen an intentional draw. So they drew? Yeah, intentional draw. That makes sense. I feel like that's a good play. Your board was Tarmogoyf counterbalance. I had an Elspeth with five counters. I made a show I played Princess Tina. Okay. I just sword your guy and not play Princess Tina, sword your Tarmogoyf. Because then I don't play Princess Tina, I don't play Fox. Well, then I have to shuffle too, and then like. Yeah. I think I instantly went there. Yeah. I, I didn't deserve it. If I thought about it, I would have done that, but I didn't think about it. So. Yeah, I'm not sure. So, you completely out of so Mirren and Besieged like comes out in the very near future. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, it should, should be an exciting a set. I mean, like, I'm can draw a really creature, excited but, like, to see what comes along. Forever, and, like, There's the uh, artifact aggro deck that did very well like, at Worlds, no, and I'm sure... Absolutely. That I mean, might get a new toy or two that he like, would have fun have playing run, with. Like, hit, run, 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 uh, run, 